30,000 flight hours in his career. Watch him as he takes this 1943 vintage stock steering biplane. As he takes off and rolls it over right on takeoff. And brings it all the way around. Now keep your eyes on the airplane. He's not done yet because he's got to put it into a high speed stall. Snap roll right over the top of the blue. It's got U.S. Army markings as the PT-17, primary trainer 17, with a 220 horsepower Continental engine on it. With over 30 years, John has been flying this airplane and others, and he is the best steerman pilot anywhere in the world. As he does a quick hammerhead turnaround and sets up for his first maneuver in the 1936 Miami Air Races. The late Len Pope was flying a, a routine that was too low at the top of a loop to safely complete it. So what Len Pope did was to do five eighths of a loop. Roll the airplane up right and do the same thing the other direction. Now watch as John Moore does that for you. Going over the top. Instead of making it a full loop, watch him as he comes over the top. He's going to throw the stick over to one side, roll the aircraft into the upright. And that's one half of what is known as a Cuban eight maneuver. Invented quite by accident by Len Kobe. After Len Kobe did the first half of that five eighths of the loop and about half a roll, he did the same thing in the opposite direction, inscribing in the side and an eight. Figure eight laying on the side. When Len Kobe was finished, they asked him what the maneuver was. Since he was training the Cuban Air Force pilots how to fly, he said, Oh, Joe Chibano, Cuban 8, and the name stuck. There's the box from our seat. John Moore, a third generation air show, and, uh, air show pilot. His grandfather was a box drawer after World War I. His dad flew. John has been flying since he was 17. As a matter of fact, by the time he was 17, he'd actually designed and built his own helicopter. Does a quick inside hump to bump together, turns around for the next maneuver. Watch him as he comes back in to set up for a four-point hesitation roll. By the way, John's son, fourth-generation flyer, is also flying steering biplanes. Now, watch as the aircraft goes into the inverted because this airplane does not have an inverted fuel and oil system like many other aerobatic airplanes have. This is a stock steering, just as it was used by students as, as they wanted to become naval aviators or army air corps aviators. Now, we saw the four-point roll. Watch as the nose comes up. Yes, this time, stock steering every 45 degrees is eight Upside down, four side four, there's five, six, seven, and eight. Nobody flies a stock steering biplane like John Moore. He is the best of the best. He has won some of the most prestigious awards in the air show industry, including the Art Scholl Memorial Showmanship Award given by the International Council of Air Shows and the Bill Barber Award for Air Show Excellence. Now watch the super slow roll, and I'm going to be really quiet as he comes across the line because I want you to listen to the engine. It's going to spark over there. The super slow roll, John Moore. Now he's going to climb for a little altitude. You can see why his peers have awarded him those two great awards, the Bill Barber and Arshold trophies. He's been flying in the Midwest since he was a child. His grandfather flew Jenny trainers. Barnes saw that for the First World War and knew Charles Lieber. Take a look at the runway, pull hard on the stick, get the nose pointing toward the ground, and come through with five-eighths of a loop going the opposite direction. Now, you can get, get past show center, pull 45 degrees, go Four-point roll, there's one, there's two, he's now going to be inverted, and he'll pull right through, keeping it up close to the first one. This is a very, very difficult airplane to fly. Way nearly three miles. It's empty, only develops a bow. 220 horsepower. Now it goes into a square loop across the top, pushing hard. It can't stay inverted too long. Now he'll pull hard on the stick to get it going straight down to the side three of the loop. There's side three. He's a three. He's a three. 200 feet. 100 feet. And pops Let's give it up for John Moore. Now he's done the Cuban 8. 
the reverse cue to me. He's going to box Charles Lou. He's going to square Lou. He's going to get a turn around and he's going to set up for an eight-sided loop. Remember, very, very underpowered compared to most other aerobatic airplanes. So John Moore is going to get her done for you. He'll come across over. He'll go straight up. Watch for the quarter roll now. He'll do a beautiful hammerhead stall turn. Zero airspeed. Kicks hard on the left rotor pedal. Turns him on the back and he gives you nine cents change. Now, there's the roll out. He's got some energy. Take, take it back to the left hand side. Do a reversal and get the energy he needs not to do a round loop or a square loop. He's going to set up for an eight side loop. He does his entire performance less than 700 feet above the ground. This is a classic bar swarmer and with an incredible power. That's the eight-sided loop. Now, John's going to clap for some altitude as he does a little rollout as he uh, takes it back around to the left. He's going get to get the engine to cool down a bit, and he's going to get some altitude so he can turn that into speed and energy he needs for his next set of even more thrilling maneuvers. Again, no inverted oil or fuel system, so the engine will shut off if he's upside down too long. He's going to look to get, get the altitude, altitude to, to do, do a, a tumbling, tumbling maneuver. maneuver. It's, it's called the Lump Shabbat, but John has modified it a little bit to name and named it after his beautiful wife Lynn. He calls it the Lynn Shabbat. It's going to look completely out of control, but it's not. It is predictably out of control, and he'll get it flying right when he's supposed to again. This will involve some high-speed stalling and tumbling of a 60-plus-year-old airplane. As a matter of fact, 65 years old. Made out of wood and tubular steel with fabric sets across it. Watch him as he gets the gyroscopic action going. Does the wind shot. Snap rolls down the tumble. Oh! Oh, man, that looks like I got another vlog there. Now, heading down toward the ground once again. Watch for the quarter roll, and he's going to back off the power. He's going to back off the system. Now, he falls out, watch it turn into a spin. One and a half turn spin. Wow, what an incredible pilot this guy is. Let's give it up for John Moore. He does a, he does a quick climb roll. Now, he's going to gain some more altitude, and he's going to demonstrate what happens when an airplane stalls. Only John is going to keep it right at the edge of the stall. He's going to be flying, stalling, flying, stalling. This is all the falling meat. Power is off. Time. Look at this. Three hundred feet on the ground. Back and forth. Every time he wants to stall, he gets his nose down and he brings flying and then stalling. Look at that. Unbelievable. He's now 200 feet. He's going to come down to 100 feet. There's, there's 100, 75, 50, 40, 30, 20, and brings it right out with a power, puts a wheel right down in the grass. How about that? Unbelievable. I love the way this guy works. Now he's going to set up for the inverted pass. He's going to get a chance to see what happens when this engine really starts to talk and sputter. He'll bring it around, roll it on its back, you will hear the engine sputter, and look for the flaming restart when that engine gets the gas back in, right on the deck. He brings it in at just over 100 miles per hour. The nose comes up on its back now. Let's watch it. He's waiting. Get it going, John! There you go, the flaming restart and the inverted pass. Now here's something that the primary trainers were just not meant to do. You see the AV-8B Harrier, perhaps that vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that the Marine Corps flies. Well, John's going to do a modification of that, slow the airplane down to about 40 miles an hour, cross control it. Now watch him as he comes by. This is called the Harry Pass. Look how low he drags this airplane to the ground. Within 10 feet, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 feet, until the inverted low, low, flying the wing down so low to the ground, almost touching the wing. Do you see why they call him the best of the best? I want to hear it all the way up and down the line for John Moore from Minnesota.
great stuff. He, he, he just, he must have heard something because he just wiggled his rudder back and forth. He must have been acknowledging your applause. Now he's got to bring it around the lane, but I want you to watch this approach. This is not your typical approach to landing that most everybody else will do. John is now flying in the downwind. He's going to set up the landing on the runway. Seven right here in the airfield. To the northeast. He's now flying the downwind. He'll turn base and then turn final. The base leg 90 degrees to the landing runway direction. And then he will land. And I want you to keep your eyes on how he does it. There's base leg. He's got some altitude. John, oh wait a minute. Now he's flying. He can't land it like that. But he can see the runway because all he has to do is tilt his head back. Now as he gets down, He's not finished yet. Snap rolls the airplane just before touchdown. Watch him cross control it now with the wing down the opposite rudder and aileron. Puts it down ever so gently on the ground. One wheel at a time. That's the guy. There's nobody who flies the sock steerman like John Moore. Open cockpit all the way. Does a beautiful one wheel at a time landing and puts it down. Let's hear it for John Moore. As we continue on, we're going to be bringing Frank Ryder to our show in just a moment. My friend Doug McDaniel is going to be up here, but we want to say a great big thank you to Home Depot, another proud sponsor of the Navy and local events of the Pensacola community, including today's Blue Angels Homecoming Air Show. With over 2,000 stores nationwide, job site delivery, will call pickup, and a GSA scheduled contract, the Home Depot makes it easy to get you all the maintenance and construction supplies that you need. They also accept government purchase cards for your convenience. Visit the Home Depot booth today to learn how about you how you can take part in the kids' workshop. John Moore's going to taxi down. He does a little pirouette and a burnout all the way around there, smoking it up, creating his own cloud here on this beautiful weather day here at Naval Air Station, Pensacola. And as he stops the airplane and it appears, he's going to climb out there. And I want you to give him away and a big round of applause. John Moore! He'll be taxiing back, coming up in a moment, Frank Ryder. This morning, we still have for you, after Frank Ryder, the United States Air Force's F-15 Eagle, the West Coast demo team, and uh, Joe Giuliano will be up to, uh, to present that uh, narration for you. But in the meantime, before I do that, I want to say hello to my good friend, Doug McDaniel, from, uh, from Huntsville, uh, Alabama, and uh, Doug